Okay, today we're gonna to be looking at Punnett squares and Punnett squares are a way that we can predict the probability of a offspring's traits that we're tracking based on the parent's um, traits. And so to completely understand this, we gotta get two things down to kind of get an understanding. First of all, we have a cell and inside the cell is the nucleus and the nucleus contains the DNA, okay? And so the DNA is what we're tracking through uh, sexual reproduction. That's what we're going to be focusing on in a female and male producing offspring. So when cells split and divide, they go through mitosis and then meiosis to be able to develop sex cells, which are your sperm and your egg. If we talk about humans, for example, you're going to have 23 chromosomes provided to each sex cell, so the sperm and the egg will receive 23 chromosomes. And when they combine to make a fertilized egg, which is a zygote, then half the traits are going to come from the parent offspring, so or the parent organism. So you'll get half the traits from uh, the female and half the traits from the male in the process of looking at what the offspring have. I hope that makes sense, okay? And when we look at the DNA, if we unravel the DNA, you know, we have these different strands. And we have areas of the DNA that are your genes. And the genes are going to code for the different traits, okay? Now, I know we talked about humans up here a minute ago because, you know, I know that off the top of my head as far as how many chromosomes each uh, human is going to have that they contribute to their offspring. But in this example, we're just going to play the game of rabbits, okay? So I'm not sure how many chromosomes rabbits have. You guys out there watching this video may know that. But we're going to be looking at a gene for fur color, okay? Now the genes are going to provide what's called the alleles. And the alleles are, are what we're going to be looking at to track that gene. For example, in this example, we're going to look at fur color. And let's pretend like in these rabbits that brown is the dominant color, meaning if you look out there among 100 rabbits, a large percent of those rabbits are going to be brown. But every once in a while you see some white rabbits. We're going to consider that to be the recessive trait, what doesn't occur very often. And we're going to see through this process why that is. And so let's pretend like in this gene of the DNA of the chromosome that it's going to code for hair color for a rabbit. Okay, so we're going to track that. Now remember brown was dominant so we're going to consider that to be a large B as we're tracking this. And the white, you might think we're going to use a W, but we're not because we want to make sure we use the same letters to represent the color we're looking and tracking. And so we're going to use a small B, which means the recessive trait. That'll make more sense as we go through the video, okay? All right, so we're going to start off with a tic-tac-toe sign. You guys in today's world might be thinking of this as a hashtag. And... We're going to track it by the female's genes and the male's genes or the alleles that they're going to pass on to their offspring. So basically, uh, we're going to kind of split this area right here and we're going to put the female's traits on top that we're tracking. This is the symbol for a female. This is a symbol for male. I think these came in Roman times or Greek times. And the female symbol, so you kind of remember what that is. Sometimes you'll see this on bathroom signs. But that means, uh, or that symbolizes a mirror as though, uh, you know, a female wants to look pretty, wants to look glamorous, so she might be looking into a mirror. And the male sign comes from, you know, a hunter, um, fighter, a shield and spear. And so that's how that came about, okay? So each offspring has a parent, right? Let's go back to this one. So even these parents, so the female rabbit we're going to be looking at with the male rabbit that she um, reproduces with, um, they had parents too. And so remember 23, in, in the humans at least, 23 uh, alleles or, or traits came from, 23 chromosomes came from the dad and 23 came from mom. So remember these, these parents of these two, two organisms that are going to mate had parents of their own. So let's say that this parent right here was brown. And let's say that this parent right here that's going to have offspring is white. Now remember, we said that um, brown was the dominant trait. So let's pretend like this female rabbit that's going to mate with this male rabbit has two alleles. It got one allele, a big B, 
Remember, that's dominant brown from its mom, for example. And let's say that it got another trait from its other parent, let's say a little b, from its dad. So this female received a big b in the egg that was provided to, to make her. And then the little bee came from, the, from her daddy's sperm that fertilized the egg to make the fur color that she currently has. Okay, and this is a phenotype. This is what we see when we see this rabbit. Okay, now when we look at this, well, the color is the phenotype. This is the genotype. Okay, so get that, get that kind of straight. So big B, little B would be the genotype. Okay, now when we look at the white daddy, remember to be white, you had to have a recessive trait. And remember that recessive trait when we talked about it was a little B. So dad's going to have a little B, little B. Okay. This is the only way you can be white because if a big B shows up, it's dominant. It's going to overpower the white gene, okay, or the allele, all right? So these alleles are going to move to the right for dad, and they're going to move down for mom to the offspring. These are going to be considered the babies they're going to have. So remember, we're looking at probability. Out of four bunnies, how many other bunnies will be white and how many will be brown? So we're going to carry the bees down here so this, this mom contributes a big B here. And it also contributes a big B to this offspring. It contributes a little b here and a little b there. So this is mom's contribution from her eggs that are going to be fertilized by dad's sperm here, okay? So dad provides each of the bunnies a little b because that's all he can give, okay? So he gives a little b there, a little b here, a little b here, and a little b here, okay? And when we look at this, we notice the combinations are kind of 50-50 split. So we have two that are big B, little b, and two that are little b, little b. And when we look at that, remember, this is a dominant trait. It's going to show up when we see it. And remember, that big B stood for what color? Brown. So these two babies are going to be brown. Now look at these babies here. They don't have any big Bs. All that shows up is a recessive trait, the little Bs. So that means those babies are going to be white. So we have two brown bunnies, two white bunnies, okay? So right now, it was 50-50. The parents have a 50-50 chance of having a brown or white offspring bunny, okay? Now, let's pretend like this bunny and this bunny are male and female. You know, in the animal kingdom, sometimes we still have, you know, siblings that end up breeding when they get old enough. So we're going to just, I know that's kind of disturbing to think about, but let's pretend like they moved away from each other, forgot they were brother and sister, and they come back and see each other one day, and they end up having a family of their own. So let's go ahead and, and see what happens here. So same thing. We got the girl bunny and the male bunny. And remember, they were both big B, little b. We're going to talk about the names for these here in a little bit, okay? So the female is going to contribute a big B here and a big B there. The female is going to contribute a little b here and a little b there. Dad's contributing these letters, so it's going to be a big B here and a big B here. And this dad's uh, over here is going to contribute a little b and a little b. Okay, so now we have one organism that's two big b's, two organisms in the offspring that are big b, little b, and one that is two small b's. That's what we see, and remember there's two of these. So one of those, one of these, and two of those. Well, what, what color is this bunny going to be? The big B shows up, so it's going to be brown. There, big B, little B, two of those. Guess what color they'll be? If you said brown, you're right, because that big B is going to make them brown. And this one, what's it going to be? Two little Bs, it'll be white. So three out of the four are brown, right? So hopefully you're starting to see why these are dominant traits. Anytime a big B shows up, brown's what we get. So out of these, we had two browns, two whites. This time we got three browns, one white. Okay? All right. Let's keep going. We're going to talk about what we call these here in just a little bit. Let's go back to this again. Let's pretend like we got another combination happening. Let's say we got big B, big B, little B, no, let's say big B, little B, okay? And here's the mom, dad, 
Okay, going down here, Big B, Big B, Big B, Big B. You should already know what all these babies are going to be because Big B show up. So we'll get to it here in a minute. Big B this way, Big B this way. It's going over here. This little B here, this little B there. So we have two that are Big B, Big B, and two that are Big B, Little B. So guess what color they are? Brown. And here, brown. Why is that? Because these big bees are showing up. Anytime a big bee shows up, the baby's gonna be brown, okay? So right now in our combinations we've seen so far, four browns, no whites, three browns, one white, two browns, and two whites. So we're starting to see why there's so many browns in the population because it's dominant. Anytime the big bee shows up, it's gonna be there. So there's one combination we haven't done yet. Let's do that one. Big B, Big B. Big B, Big B. It's gonna be a female rabbit, male rabbit. Big B here, Big B there. Here, here. Over this way, over this way, over this way, over this way. So here we got four, two Big Bs. All brown bunnies. So when we look at this, these parents will never ever have a white baby, okay? And their offspring can only have a white baby. No, they can never have a white baby actually, ever. Because that would be like this, right? Even if they were to, uh, you know what, there's, yeah, no, we haven't, there's one more combination we still haven't done. Let's do that one real quick. I was kind of looking to look back. I'm going to say if we had it, we didn't have it. We haven't done this one yet. So four brown babies. Let's look at this one. This is the last one. We haven't done this one yet. So we got big B, big B, little B, little B. Think about this one before we get going on it. What are you thinking? Mom's going to give a big B, big B, big B, big B, little B here, little B there. Little B here, little B there. Guess what we got? We got four big B little Bs. All brown. Because the big B shows up. Okay? So these parents always have brown babies, okay? But it's possible that they could go out one day and have babies of their own if they were to have a, a actually this one was a white baby, wasn't it? Or white parent. But if they were to go out and have babies with a white parent, they could have white babies themselves, right? Okay? So even though this parent right here, this was white, this was brown. As long as these two continue to have babies, they will never ever have a white baby, even though the white daddy is always in the mix. Because a mom being dominant brown on both of her alleles, they will never ever have a white baby. Okay? It's kind of cool, huh? Okay, so that's why uh, brown is dominant. So we use the big letters to represent that. Let's go back and talk about our combinations. So here, we consider this to be heterozygous. Heterozygous just means that we have one, big, one dominant allele and one recessive allele. That's called heterozygous. Over here, we have the same two big Bs, right? This is called homozygous dominant. Now, homo means same, okay? Homo, homo sapien, okay? Homosexual, you've heard that in today's time for sure. Okay, meaning same sexes, okay? So two big Bs is homozygous. Homozygous dominant. Now we saw this come up right here. This one right here. Big B, little B. That was heterozygous, right? Two little Bs, what do you think? They're the same. Also homozygous, but not homozygous dominant. Homozygous recessive, okay? So just a quick wrap up. Let's go to a clean piece of paper here. So we could have big B, big B, always equals brown. Remember this is homozygous, dominant. Big B, little B, also brown. Heterozygous, meaning the opposite. So basically a allele that's a dominant and an allele that's recessive. And then we finally have the other combination, little B, little B, which is white, and this is going to be homozygous because they're the same, 
recessive. And recessive is the only way you're ever going to get white is with two small bees. And we saw just looking back that we don't see that very often. We had four big, four big bee little bees, which was heterozygous, four homozygous dominants, one homozygous dominant, two heterozygous, one homozygous recessive. Then we had two homozygous dominant and two heterozygous. Two, homoz or hom two heterozygous and two homozygous recessive. And so if you notice, the whites just don't show up very often. That's why they're recessive, okay? All right, hopefully this has helped you out. Uh, this was a monohybrid cross. You can look at dihybrid cross. Uh, maybe I'll come up with a video on that one day. But for now, we're just looking at monohybrid. And uh, that's, again. I mean, hopefully this has helped you out. Let me know in the comments below. And if you have any questions, I'll be happy to help you out. Don't forget to subscribe and like, and please share my videos. And when you subscribe, make sure you hit the notification bell, and that will alert you to new videos that come out. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time on Mr. Hayes' YouTube channel.